Hi everyone, Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. A few years ago I did a review on the Worldly Easy Control Surface Control Unit, which is this unit here, demonstrating how the actual thing works. At the same time I also demonstrated how to use the Easy Controller software on your PC to edit the MIDI control codes which are set in the unit itself. And since then I have had many many questions about the unit, especially the one where to download the controller software so that you can edit it. Of course the software is now available also on my website recordingstudio9.com and also you can download for PC and Mac version which is the identical file which is still current on the worldy.cn website. I will have the link to the website in the description as well, so you can click download either from my website or from the worldy's website. Out of the many questions that I've got over the years, let me explain a few things about this controller. It is a MIDI surface controller and acts as a MIDI device on your PC or on your Mac and basically every time you slide the sliders or turn the knobs or press a button it basically sends a signal, a MIDI control signal into your PC and eventually in your DAW to control faders, pans, mute, record button, on off, whatever the functionality you set in your DAW or at the same time it could be in a VST instrument, maybe organ draw bars you can assign them to, and so on. One thing you need to remember that is one way device, it only sends signal out. So what does that mean, signal one way? It means it only affects changes in your DAW. So if you change something in your DAW, it will not reflect here. One of the most common things are faders. So if you use this and set up as a fader and you move the sliders to change the faders in your mixer, in your DAW, it will change them in your DAW. But if you go and change the fader with your mouse, obviously that change will not reflect in here because these things are not motorized. So they're not going to go up and down. Or let's say if you had a setup and then you shut down your DAW and start it again and you've got all your sliders at zero and you open the project again and the faders in your DAW will have certain levels that you last time mixed. So if you go ahead and start changing it again, the faders will reflect in your DAW back to what the faders here now. So it can actually change from the last time you had it all nicely mixed. So you make sure you remember that it is a one way. So a good way to utilize this is to write in the faders. Let's say while the song is playing, you arm your automation and then you, you can use your fingers to do multiple fader changes and write in your faders to write automation. And then once the writing is finished, then you can disconnect it and then your faders will automate to whatever you change. And then you can obviously use your mouse click to refine it and change it and fix it later on if you wanted to. Because if you want to do faders which synchronize and change from your DAW back into here, you require a motorized faders, but these ones are not motorized. I hope that clears it up because that's the most common question I get that when they came back to the project, all the faders got to zero again or they all got changed and they had to do it all over again. That's because they didn't understand the fact that this will not reflect any changes even if you shut down your DAW and come back again. I hope that bit clears out. The other question I always get is 
regarding to the software. I get a lot of questions saying that it doesn't work. I cannot talk to the unit. One thing I have to mention is that you got to make sure that the Easy Controller is the only device connected and Easy Controller software is the only software running on your PC or on your Mac. Any other software like a DAW, if it's active and running even in the background, it will interfere and the Easy Controller software, the editor software, won't be able to communicate with the actual unit because your DAW is in control. So make sure that if you're having issues to communicate with the device, is to shut down any other application running in the background that would be using. That also means that if you have any other MIDI devices con connected, like your MIDI keyboard, if they are plugged in and connected, just disconnect them. So make sure Easy Controller is the only MIDI device connected so that you can communicate using the software. And I hope that clears that question as well. Now, let me practically show you how I'm going to connect the Easy Controller using the connector that came with it into my laptop. And man, my laptop is running Windows 10 64 bit, pretty much the latest update as well. So I'm just going to connect it and run the Easy Controller software and demonstrate changes using the buttons because they're the most visual you can actually see. I'm going to change the buttons from being momentarily one, uh, from toggle one into momentarily. And you will see that what, what I mean. And I'm going to show you that it does actually work on, even on Windows 10. I won't be able to demonstrate it on a Mac platform because I don't have a Mac PC. But the procedure is pretty much the same and all the things I mentioned previously in the video also apply to the Mac version. Okay, so I have the connector that plugs in here on one end and on the other end I'm just going to connect to the USB input. And we do have a light, which is the bank light or scene, one, two, three, and four. So it's all powered up and ready to go. I'm going to put all the sliders down as well. So let's have a look at the screen running the Easy Controller software. Okay, the software actually comes as a RAR file, which is a compressed file. And you can either use WinRAR to extract it. Or in my case, also 7-zip is another option you can extract. I have already extracted the, the file into a folder called Easy Software Editor PC. I'm just going to double click. And in the folder, you will find the Easy Control Editor executable. And that's all there is. You can, there's no installation or anything. You just double click and run it. Here we can actually select Easy Control and OK. Now the software doesn't actually have any option to select which MIDI port. It expects to be the only MIDI device. So that's why I recommend it to, for you to actually make sure that the Easy Controller is the only MIDI device connected and turned on so that the software can find it. If you have in the past edited the Easy Controller, with your own special MIDI control codes, it's always a good idea to read the scene data back. I'm going to click on that. Click OK. Are you sure? OK. And now I have read. So now I can edit and modify what was already there. And I'm going to modify scene one or bank one in button one and two. So looking here, as you can see, the buttons, when I press it, they come on. You know, in a DAW, you can certainly mark that as either record or mute or solo, whichever one you like. As you can see, there are toggle. They, you press on, you press off. I'm going to change that into momentarily. So here on the screen, 
I'm going to change it into momentarily. And button 2 as well. Into momentarily. And communication. And send that data to the unit. Clicking OK. OK. And it's done. So as we can see here, I am on bank 1 or scene 1. These buttons are on toggle mode as previously, except button 2 and 1, 1 and 2. They are in toggle mode, or momentary mode, I should say. They are in momentary mode. So you press on and then off, press on and off. So that demonstrates that the communication between the unit and the software is all working fine under Windows 10, 64-bit version. Just going to change it back into toggle mode, then the data. Now, as you can see, it automatically reset. And now I have toggle mode on all the buttons again. Well, I hope that provides enough information about the uh, Easy Controller and helps you out. But if you still have any issues, you can comment below and I'll try to help out for you. I don't use this MIDI uh, controller um, from Worldy on a regular basis, but I do have it. Just like now, I was able to demonstrate working on Windows 10. You can comment below and I'll try to help you out as well. Otherwise, you can also ov obviously contact Worldy support for any further information. If this was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel as well. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, guys.